ready to do round three on the rainbow reed. It's been a couple days and a little bit of weather changing, and so I haven't really played this reed or taken much of a look at it. We're going to see what the tip opening looks like, what it crows and plays like, and then hopefully make some final adjustments so that we're ready to go into some practicing and toward a performance quality read. So I've just had this soaking up for a few minutes here. The first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the tip opening and see if it's still A, balanced, and B, the, the aperture that I want, which is about, again, that width of the dime. You can see that it's, it's pretty balanced in the four quadrants, that the primary and secondary curves look about the same all the way around, which means that the cane's pretty evenly dense and that I've done a pretty decent job of keeping everything scraped uniformly across the four sides there. Um, as I've expected, it's a little bit wider than I might want, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Typically, I'll close it from the first wire, mostly because um, that's going to impact kind of the least the, the least number of variables uh, from other in terms of other performance qualities with this read. Um, so I'm going to close from the first wire until it's a, at a performance opening. It's gotten even more muffled. I'm going to open this up. And actually, having heard that, what I'm going to do is flatten the second wire a little bit, flatten the first wire even more, try to reduce some of that, that pressure that's through the throat of the reed. That second wire uh, doesn't look exceptionally over-rounded anymore. I don't want it to be totally flat, but I have a little bit of a little bit of wiggle room with how much I can flatten out that second wire. <laughs> Already that cleared a lot of things up about the crow. So the crow now has that high, middle, and low sound. <laughs> it overblows very easily though. <laughs> I go to a single pitch, so what that's telling me is that I need to free up some of the vibration, particularly in the back of the reed, that it's taking the air, it responds. And as we as that airstream increases and more of the reed, more and more of the reed needs to vibrate, that there's a little bit of a wall that this is hitting. I can't see too much of a, a bump. It looks pretty evenly tapered, but what I can see, especially on one side, is that the spine is more prominent and it's more narrow. It's a little uh, pencil thin. So I'm gonna broaden the spine on the side where it looks peaked. It looks both looks and feels peaked. So this is a gentle angled scrape just to get the peak of that mounted off and I'm blending into the channels. The goal at this point is not to take a ton out of the channels or rails, that will only make it more stuffy. So I'm particularly in that very back third there. Wait, just a little bit in the middle, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side against the greens and about that 45 degree angle that's more of a blending stroke rather than one designed to take off a ton of cane i'll go parallel right in the very back here just to make sure that i get some uh, do some damage in that back third so to speak i'm going to use a file to clean that up part of the reed where my embouchure lies and further back, that's what's going to get that that lower partial to speak more clearly, as well as to prevent that overblowing. The impact on the tip, as I might expect, is that it's a little less prominent secondary curves. <coughs> Huge difference in the crow, right? You can hear a difference in that, that low, middle, and high. I'm going to demonstrate what this plays like on the instrument. Now that I've done that, I can bring the E-natural back, re-rounding these.
which by this point, I don't want that to be the case anymore. We should have stability in that first finger E by the third day. So I'm just making sure that I haven't gained any any slack space in the second wire with the recent dry up, and I have just a little bit. Double check the first wire. The crow's getting higher and higher. This is kind of a picky read. This is tougher than I wanted it to be. but now the, the pitch is stabilized, so I'm working my way through those priorities. The reed responds, I can get those low notes to come out, I can get the, the middle register and bass clef, I can get the tenor register to be fairly stable. Um, the intonation is somewhat even, is relatively even across, I get that first finger E to not sag, and now I'm concerned with that third priority of flexibility. I want some dynamics with this reed, I want some ability to adjust pitch. I want to be able to do different um, pitch centers at different dynamics. We ask so much of our reeds. And so to increase that flexibility, this is the area we're often afraid of. I'm going to go right along where the channels and the heart meet in this reed. Back because I'm blending. exactly where the spine is in the front half of the reed and then blending backwards to make sure that I didn't do anything uh, I didn't do anything that created a ledge at this stage I found myself making a lot of adjustments with wire and tip shape mostly because it, it matters a lot uh, how much pressure is distributed through the blade yeah, I'm just evening out the re-beefing up these rails in the sides a little bit because it's been kind of stuffy. <laughs> that sounds more like what I want here. Hopefully we're just a scrape or two away from me being able to go and do some scales on this read and put it, graduate it from my blank box into my maybe we'll play in public box. point if I have a reed that's still this saggy it's a candidate for for being clipped just a hair I clipped this up to the the 27 millimeter mark if everything else is behaving the way that I want it to and I just can't get that E to work and all of the measurements are close to where I want them to be I'll double check here with the micrometer and everything is behaving or it looks the way that it should but it's not necessarily behaving the way that it should I'm spot on on that side. Be on that side. If I do a, just sort of a spot check in the middle, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Then I know that I might just have a situation where I've got some soggy cane here, and that could be why it's a little. It's been a little stuffy, a little hard to work with earlier in the process. The last thing I'm going to do before clipping this is sand out in between the blades. I might be able to get some of that squishy cane out from in between. Here, this is a little bit heavier sandpaper. This is my 220 wet dry. Fine with soggy cane or a cane that has these wider fibers in it that I that I have reads that oscillate much more rapidly between what we've heard with this one which is flat but still stuffy and then it's resistant and then it goes flat again that it's very um, it's very difficult to get a really dense core to the sound along with a reed that will behave and and function the way we want it to if I raised the pitch, I wonder if I did. I got a little piece of cane stuck on the inside. I heard that delay of sound that we haven't had before, and everything that I just did should not have done that, so I sanded a little piece of cane right in between the blades. That's more what I'm expecting. Thank <laughs> you. 
That actually cleared up a lot of things. The only thing I'm not really happy with this read at this point is the, the crispness of the articulation. It responds when I do some double tonguing and such in the tenor register, but it sounds just a hair fluffy. I'm gonna do the very last thing, that very front millimeter, take it down just a tiny bit more, see if I can't crisp that up. This is the part that makes me a little bit nervous because everything's fine and we're just going from a read that is good to a read that is great. maintain those high standards if it doesn't do everything that you want it to do and keep on keep trying and the more precise you get with what you're looking for front millimeter this does take a sharp knife, so you may need to sharpen your knife before this. I found that if you use a knife, then it's much more likely to get that, that crisp start to the sound. If you use sandpaper, then it sort of rounds the edges and will make it make everything a little more a little more dull, which can be nice if you're looking for something gentle, a really soft second bassoon reed, say. But if you're looking for something that really has that concerto quality that ha that will grab some attention, then using knife for right at the very front will help with that. <laughs> that sounds like it might have done the trick. And you can hear that little bit of rattle at the front of the crow, which usually is associated with more a more uh, solid start to the note. do it for this rainbow read so that's three stages if you look at the timestamps of the video it's a total of just under 45 minutes if you also narrate all of your steps for a camera the way that I do um, it's 45 minutes over the period of about a week we'll get this read from a blank to something where I can play in rehearsals in the practice room and after another probably a couple three hours of playing time when it breaks in I may make some final adjustments if we if it if the cane starts breaking in unevenly just to make sure everything stays balanced over the four quadrants but for the most part this read is probably you know a week or so away from being performance ready so i hope this has been helpful going through we'll follow another read just to so you can start gathering and and extracting some general principles about these read scrapes but that's the that's initially my first week with a blank to go from absolutely unscraped to playing the bassoon. I hope this is this is useful for you and I will see you next time.